Ira Estrus Davenport and William Henry Davenport were born in Buffalo, in the state of New York. The former on September 17, 1839, and the latter on February 1, 1841. Despite controversy that would plague them through life and death, they are considered instrumental in building the popularity of the American spiritualist movement prior to the Civil War. Their story starts in 1846, when the family were disturbed in the middle of the night by what they described as raps, thumps, loud noises, snaps, and crackling noises. The two Davenport boys experimented by placing their hands on a table. Loud and violent noises were heard, and messages were spelt out. Ira developed automatic writing and handed to those present messages written at extraordinary speed and containing information he could not possibly have known. Soon after that, cups, plates and cutlery began to move in the brothers' presence and they could make manifestations appear almost at will. Word got out about these amazing brothers and soon people began to flock from all over the state to witness what the brothers were capable of. Soon after, the family got in touch with what would become the Davenport Spirit Guide, a phantom named John King, who would go on to become the busiest spirit guide in the spiritualist movement. King allegedly told the family to begin renting a hall and to give public performances of the Davenport brothers' reported powers. Not unlike the request made to the Fox sisters, who would experience a similar phenomenon. Of course, they were not without their detractors and skeptics. Professors of Harvard set up several challenges in order to show them up as mere illusionists and tricksters. But despite heavy binding with ropes or being locked inside cabinets, nothing appeared to prevent them from being able to communicate with the other side. Their acts created a sensation and after 10 years performing in the States, they took their act to England, where they enjoyed just as much success, if not more. Dignitaries and the well-to-do hired them for private parties, and highbrow newspapers such as the Times were enthralled by what the brothers appeared to be capable of doing. However, the key word here is appeared. Interestingly, neither brother ever claimed to be a medium leaving that up to the audience to decide. They did, however, bill the act as a seance, and most spiritualists believed their manifestations to be genuine. But the great secret of the Davenport success lay in their uncanny, albeit natural, ability to remove themselves from complex knots and ties and then return to them in record time. The most important part of the procedure took place during the binding, when they managed to obtain plenty of slack in the ropes by twisting, flexing and contouring their limbs once they relaxed. The ropes could easily be slipped out of. Harry Keller, the master magician, was employed by the Davenports for a time as their assistant and afterwards learnt to do tricks that altogether surpassed even the brothers' skills at rope tying and escapes. According to Keller, They employed as many as ten accomplices at a time, and took great pains to hinder investigators and debunkers by placing traps in the aisles of the theatre. That way, no one could sneak onto the stage during the seance and surprise them. The Davenport careers came to an end in 1877, when William died suddenly. In honour of his brother, Ira ordered a magnificent memorial for him, on which was carved a representation of their ropes, cabinet, and other seance props. Years after they retired from the business, surviving brother Ira was interviewed and befriended by the magician Harry Houdini. According to Houdini, Ira positively disclaimed spiritual powers in his talk with me, saying that he and his brother never claimed to be mediums or pretended there were to be spiritualistic. But rather than turn down the money and appearances, they allowed the public to think whatever they wanted about them. 
Ira Davenport taught Houdini some of their best escapes, and Houdini later used them and found them to be very effective and clever. He also discovered that the brothers rubbed oil onto their hands so they could slip out of the ropes more easily. A tactic he himself adopted. Despite Houdini and Keller's inside expose, the case of the Davenports is still not one entirely agreed upon by spiritualists to this day. Undoubtedly, an element of trickery and showmanship was used. But there were still certain aspects that were harder to explain away, such as the ability to cause instruments to float, possessing intimate information about complete strangers, and causing a pencil to write with no sign of a hand. Your own thoughts on spiritualism will no doubt colour your thoughts on this matter. But I will leave you with this quote by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle from his book A History of Spiritualism, which this documentary is adapted from. Mr. Houdini has seemed to question whether the Davenports themselves ever asserted that they were spiritualists. It may clear the matter up finally to quote the following from a letter written by them in 1868 to the Banner of Light, a leading spiritualist journal in the United States, dealing with the report that they were not spiritualists. They wrote, It is singular that any individual skeptic or spiritualist could believe such statements after 14 years of the most bitter persecution and violent opposition, culminating in the riots of Liverpool, Huddersfield and Leeds, where our lives were placed in imminent peril by the fury of brutal mobs, our property destroyed, and where we suffered a loss of $75,000, and all because we would not renounce spiritualism and declare ourselves jugglers when threatened by the mob and urged to do so. In conclusion, we have only to say that we denounce all such statements as falsehoods. <laughs>